In this example, I want to do a frame analysis using beam elements. The first thing I'll do is make an active project. And once I've set my active project, then I will open up. In this case, I have a trailer frame assembly. And in that trailer frame, I have also a shell over top of the trailer frame so we could recognize what the assembly would look like. And then we would have an axle. This would actually be a dual axle, an axle here and an axle here with a leaf spring on each side going from front to back. I'm going to go over here to representations and I'm going to go to level of detail. Make the master level of detail the active uh, level of detail detail and then I'm going to delete this shell out of the assembly we won't need this part so we could suppress it or delete it I'm going to uh, delete it out so that we don't run into any issues uh, with the shell in our analysis because we're only an analyzing the frame itself so we're we're analyzing long skinny parts like this if they're made with the frame generator we can use beam elements rather than tetrahedral mesh elements we take a very long time to mesh this with tetrahedral elements and the result based on the mathematics uh, might not be the best results that we could get so we simplify this with straight line beam elements so i'll go to environments and instead of doing stress analysis i'll do frame analysis and so our beams are replaced with elements and a node at each end of the elements. Let's go to shaded view and we can see through the frame members but I want to turn off the visibility of the frame members for now. So I'm going to go to frame analysis settings and on the beam model tab I could set them to be shaded, transparent, or invisible. I'm going to set them to be invisible. And while we're here let's go to the general tab. I can set the size of the nodes, the blue dots. I could set the color of loads, constraints, and nodes. I'm going to change the rigid length. I'm going to change those to red so that we can see those better and we'll, I'll explain those rigid lengths here in a minute. I can also set size, a percentage size for the labels uh, that we put on our individual beam elements. Okay so now we see only the elements and the nodes between those and notice that where we would have a gap in between the beams, the ends of the beams, uh, Inventor has placed a rigid link to connect each one of those beams together. And if we should go around and make sure that every Everything is connected. Uh, really, we'll get an error later on if there are any uh, missing connections, and then we can easily find them. The first thing I want to do is set the direction for gravity. So I will go to the lows, and I'm going to do, uh, edit this gravity and make sure that gravity is pointing in the correct direction. In this case, I want it pointing down. And then I'm going to go through and put individual lows on each one of these beams. As we do this, you might do it slightly different than I do it. But if you think about this, if you were loading up a trailer, it would be highly unlikely that different people would get the load distributed exactly the same as I distribute the load. So if we end up with some minor differences in the distribution of our load, that is to be expected. We want our load to be primarily from the axles forward, but we don't want to get too much of a load on the tongue, and we don't want too much of a load on the back or if we get too much load on the tongue that would cause the back of the tow vehicle to be pushed down and the front of the tow vehicle to be pushed up so the steering and braking would be reduced if we have the load too far forward if we have the load too far back it's going to pull up on the back of the tow vehicle in which case our traction for our uh, drive wheels is going to be reduced so it's really important that we follow the instructions for the tow vehicle and for the trailer manufacturer on how we load the trailer. Based on some hand calculations of various toolboxes and shelves, part shelves and so forth, I have done some hand calculations to calculate how much of a load is going to be distributed across the various frame members of our trailer frame. I've also put a pin constraint at the location of each connection to the to where the, the leaf springs would be connected and to where the tongue of the trailer would connect to the hitch for the tow vehicle. So I'll go through and put my pin constraints and I'm going to put a pin constraint at this node right here and I'll apply that. So that's going to be my rear right and I'll put a pin constraint over at that location and that will be left rear and then I'll put one 
this location I'll put a pin constraint at the front left by that and then a pin constraint at the front right. I'm also going to put a pin constraint and I want this pin constraint to be at the center of this beam right here. I'm going to select the, the beam off center and then I can tell it to do an absolute value or a relative value, I'm going to put it at 50% of the length of that beam. So I'll do 0.5. It moves it to the center of that beam for the location for my trailer hitch. I want to rename each one of these pin constraints. So I'm going to click twice slowly, or you can hit F2, and I'm going to call this one right rear. I will name this one left rear. I'll name this one left front. I will name this one right front, and I'll name this one as tongue. Call this hitch tongue. Okay, so I've defined gravity. I've defined the pin constraints to hold my frame in place. We're doing a static analysis. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to put some continuous loads along various beams. And so this is going to take a bit of time. I'll do bits of it and we'll see how this uh, works. So for the for this cross beam right here, right here, and right here, I want a force of five pounds per inch. And I will uh, select the, the beam member and it tells me that this beam is 6.1 inches long. So if I have five pounds force per inch, I have about 30 pounds of force that I've put on that beam element. I'll do apply. I'll do the next one. And so this one is 21 inches long, five times 21, apply that. And I'll do this one. This one is about 26 inches long. So five times 26 for the force on that beam the total force. I'm then going to uh, put a force along this beam of one pound per inch. I'll get my selection tool and I'll select it and so I'm doing one pound per inch. This part is 53 inches long so 53 pounds of force along that beam. I'll select apply and then I'm going to put a force of 11.5 pounds per inch and I'm going to put that along this beam and I want it only from this point over and so I'm going to select this beam and I want it to start over here now there's going to be a start condition and an end condition which will change depending on how we created our frame in this case our start position is over at this end I can drag that and I just drag it to an approximate position now you could type in an exact distance, but if you were loading up a trailer by hand, you know, you're not going to get it to an exact distance. So I'm not even going to worry about putting it at, to an exact distance. And then I want the uh, length of this to be for a toolbox that's going to go here. I want it to be about 20 inches long. So I'll put in 20 inches for the length and I'll apply that. I'm going to do the same thing on this one for the other corner of the toolbox. I want the length of this to be 20 and uh, from this corner um, going back towards the back. Let's uh, put, uh, we, we have the shell, the, the cap shell that goes on here. Let's put the load for that on this distance from here to here as well. So let's do uh, one, that was one pound per inch and I'll select this line and I want that to come back to from here over to here and I'll do apply to that. Then I'm going to put a load over on this side and I want this load to be 14.25 and I want it to be along this beam, but I want to start to be, or I want it to be a total length of 20 inches. 20 in and hit tab, don't hit OK or apply. And then I want to move those, the start position of that one, over till it's about right there. So it's 20 inches long at 14.25 pounds per inch. I'll apply that. Then I'm going to select this one and I'm going to make that uh, 20 inches long. Now this is a little bit different than my original diagram. I found a, a mistake in my diagram so I'm putting a toolbox uh, back here. I want the, the force along this direction to be the same as the force along that direction. So I've made changes as I'm going along. I'll apply and then I want to put a force of one pound per inch along this line and I want that to go to this position right here so I'm going to drag the start of it so I can tell the start uh, where we have this symbol notice we could also change a direction of the force along that axis or along this axis and we could type in exact values if we know those uh, exact values 
and so I want this one to go from here over to here so that's the shell and I'll apply that and I'll select this one and I want that along the entire length I'll say apply to that force as I was doing this I realized that I put too much force up here and so I can go back and edit those the first three I will go to the the first load and I meant for that to be 0.5 so I was putting too much of a load so 0.5 for the six inches so about three pounds at that position and I will go to this the second one and that should be 0.5 so about 10 pounds here and the third one 0.5 and the length is 25 so about 12 pounds 13 pounds of force along there. All right, now we'll continue per inch force along here. And so I'll do a continuous load on this beam, one pound per inch. Then I'm gonna change the load to 27.8. And I'm going to, I want that load to go from here over to here and then coming out here, 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 and here. So this is for some part shelving. I know the total weight of the part shelving I'm going to distribute that weight across these beams and so I'll, I'll select this beam and I want it to start I'm having trouble selecting the start to move it so I'll come over here and put in an offset let's say of 30 and I'll, I'll hit the tab and now that I've put that offset in it makes it easier for me to select that and so there's where the load will begin and here's where the load will end and then I'm going to select this beam and I want this one to come from this side out a distance of 20 inches. Apply the same load here. Now this one's starting over here, ending over here. I want the total length to be 20. So I'll put in 20, hit the tab key. Then I can move the beginning, move the beginning over. And I want to move this just to where if you move this too far, watch the 20 over here. If I move that too far, that will start to be reduce that um, uh, number. And so I want to put that back on 20. And if I, it won't allow me to go 20 because that would be beyond uh, the end of the beam. So I need to bra drag it this way, put in the 20. And then just be careful. Again, it doesn't have to be perfectly lined up to the end there. We just uh, get that close without reducing that from 20 or if we reduce it slightly less than 20 it doesn't matter all right i'll apply and then i'll select the next beam and the same thing i want this one to be a length of 20 and i'll move that down and uh then i'm drag this drag this down again if you have trouble getting it i'll put in an offset so you can uh, and hit the tab key so you can more easily get that and i'll move that down all right so i've applied my loads along here and I missed one right there I thought I put it in I must have missed that so I'll do a continuous load that was 27.8 along this beam and I want it 20 inches long put in an offset to make it easier to get hold of and I'll move that back I apply on that one so I have the loads going towards the back on this side and then I'm going to put the loads on this side so on this side it's going to be 25.3 and I'll uh, select this beam member first and I want it to be a total length of 20 on this one and I'm going to put in an offset of 30 and then drag the offset further and then I will apply that and do the next one and I'll make this a length of 20 apply and this one 20 apply and this one 20 apply and then I want to go from here back to here so I'll select this beam I'm going to drag the start and I'm having trouble getting the start so I'll just put in an offset distance of a 30 and I don't know what the length will be uh, let's say 60 and then we can move things so i can move the beginning point i want that to be in this general area and then the ending point i want it to be about back here i'll drag that back to about there and that puts that load along along this beam and then i want to put a load of one pound per inch along this beam apply that and along this beam apply that along this beam apply that and along this beam and i'll say apply it on that one and then from here back to here i want 2.5 pounds per inch i'll select this beam it puts it along that entire length i'll do uh, an offset of if the, if the entire part the length of that is 160 if I do an offset of 100 that that'll get it down in that area and actually I could have done a lot more than that I can try to get that okay so I'll get that beginning point goes from here ending point to there 2.5 pounds per inch I'll apply that and then I'll get this one All right so from the beginning there and the end over to here all right so I've applied the loads to all of my beam elements and then I'm going to run the simulation so I'll run our simulation 
Notice that most of our displacement is in this area up in here and in this area right in here and this area uh, right in here but we only have about a 30 second of an inch of uh, displacement we can uh, look at the uh, normal stresses and so s max the maximum stress so the notice that the stress is given from a positive number to a negative number so where the numbers are positive or where it's a uh, yellow orange uh, to red or uh, down to uh, is in tension and where it's going from the greens into the lighter blues to the darker blues those frame members are in compression i want to get the reaction force at each one of these pin constraints so if i right click and i can get the reaction load at that pin constraint and then the reaction load at the next one and this one and this one add those up together make sure you haven't exceeded the load capacity for the trailer and then for the hitch tongue I'll get the reaction force there and make sure that our we haven't exceeded the tongue weight for the hitch for our tow vehicle.